Hi, welcome back. Another live stream. Yes, that's right. We're continuing to painting. Well, I'm doing the red slard, and I believe red slard's going to be finished today. I don't think I'm going to need to do anything more after this. So my suggestion to you is, since this is going to be very informal, is uh, grab some paints, some brushes, a miniature if you have them, and you want to join along with me, by all means, feel free to do so. And we're going to paint, uh, well I'm going to paint the red slard, and you are welcome to chat with me uh, while I do this. Otherwise, if you're not really um, wanting to do any painting, uh, there's always the option to go with something like talk because I will I will talk about anything related to Dungeons and Dragons if you want to do that and of course if you don't want to do that then we don't need to do that either <laughs> that's all right not a problem would you believe it I'm actually watching the ad okay all right well let's uh, let's get through the ad that, that's all that's all nice I'm going to do this really quickly I, I I'm aiming for about an hour and then stopping but I don't want to come back to this miniature, so if I don't finish it in an hour, I'm just going to keep going. And I'm going to run a poll at the same time uh, for anybody who sort of wants to take part, okay? Right, so let's run this poll. We're going multiverse stuff because I, I've been on a, a bent for multiverse. So, yep, let's, uh, let's paint a miniature. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I'm going to paint a frog. No, I'm going to paint the red slard. That's my intention while I'm doing some chat. So for those of you who are already aware, I've already done uh, two live streams. I've done the base colour and then we worked our way through some of the details. And now I'm going to do spots and tidy up a few things and finish off some of the details I wasn't able to do before. And that's the goal for today. And then once we've done all of that, then then we're moving on to the next miniature. Um, I have decided to set up my ring light, not just my lamps today, to make it a little bit easier. Uh, I just didn't think I could throw enough light into the space, so that's why I'm doing it that way. And uh, for anybody who's wondering why, well, um, it's I just don't have the the level of light coming through that I was hoping to get. Uh, unfortunately and I am also apparently experiencing technical issues um, apparently not receiving that much data so I'm I'm not sure why that is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if Netflix is running because that might be part of the reason why, why it's not doing that what I want it to do and then um, we'll continue we'll continue so don't go away don't run away I, I will be here Well, I don't know if that fixed anything. I'm certainly going to hope that it does and that it cleans itself up. Um, apparently it's struggling right now. I'm just going to give it an opportunity to tidy itself up before I get started. Um, do apologize for the fact that it does seem to be um, having some, some trouble today. Um, I didn't have the same sort of problems last time, but apparently today is a bit more difficult than, uh, than normal, uh, which is kind of strange. But... Um, let's hope that it is going to fix itself fairly shortly. All right, so um, I'm going to go with dealing with uh, some of the areas around where the tooth was because I wasn't really happy with that. I'm going to use a very small brush for this and, um, and then I'm going to work my way through uh, Cambian. I think I'm going to go with Cambian and then I'm going to hit it with the, the orange. Um, so this is the Knowles' Cambian Crimson. And we'll see if that helps fix a problem. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it does, but we, you never know. We'll see. We'll find out. Yeah, there we go. Now, um, wet my brush. Move that out of the way. As we were discussing yesterday, um, small brushes tend to dry up real fast, so you have to kind of get them wet. Otherwise, there's going to be significant problems. And there we are. So I, I'm probably getting too fussy at this point. Okay, to be fair, 
and my hand control and my eyes aren't as good as they used to be so me being able to fix these problems in the past it would have been a lot easier okay that does look better so probably not not a waste of my time to have done so all right well that's good i'm happy with that that's something and then i'll move on to the orange which I believe is going to be my highlight, um, but I'll do that after. I want to wait a little bit longer. Uh, now, where is it? Ah, yes, that's right. I was going to hit this with the, the zombie flesh. I'm just tidying up the teeth. I had a chance to sort of have a, had a look at the, uh, the miniature uh, yesterday, sort of decide if there were problems that I needed to fix. And what I discovered is that obviously I had missed patches uh, and that there were some cleanup to be done so um, that's what I'm going to do but we're, we're painting spots today that's definitely going to happen but I want to just at least fix the bits that I knew had um, technical issues and so I'm going to just use a little bit of paint there's just a little bit of the teeth that I kind of missed um, and I'm hoping that this will come off all right Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. It wasn't very much. It was just a little touch up. Nothing, ma ma nothing major. Not at all. And then what do we got here? Um, I wanted to deal with the base. That's right. I wanted to deal with the base. I was kind of feeling like I needed to hit it with another color. I've done two colors so far. One was um, two grays. And uh, now I'm going to hit it with a, a grayish blue. And... Um, I guess my intention when doing this was I want to use a standard brush which has kind of gotten a bit mottled over, over time to do this. I'm going to use um, gelatinous blue because I think it'll, it'll help bring out the, the stonework in it. No guarantees, but that's the hope that it'll bring out the stonework in it. Okay, let's see. Oh, give it a shake. There's lots of medium in these things, but uh, which is why I haven't been watering them down. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they are um, shaken well enough to actually do what you need to do. There we go. Not very much. Oh, was that going to be enough? That's, it is the, the base of the miniature. There's quite a bit of paint there to go over. All right, let's do that. That's probably enough. So what is everybody else painting today? It's gotten very quiet in the chat today. It's like, I suspect, you know what I think it is. I think everybody's got all their miniatures set up. They know, okay, Fred's going to be here at about 10 o'clock. Uh, that's in New Zealand, AM. Um, I'll have all my stuff ready to go and just paint and listen. Well, he talks nonstop or tries to. <laughs> yeah, that could be what's going on. But I'm glad to see we've got some um, votes in the, the poll. And how are we looking? So we've got three votes and we've got nobody's played in a multiverse game so far out of the three votes. We'll wait a little bit longer, come back to that later. So I'm going to go around the outside edge with this. I'm not really trying to paint it on really thick and I'm not really trying to dry brush it because I don't think I need to spend that much time on it and get, get too fancy with it. What would be the point? So I'll just work my way around here and then along the top. So we were, I was talking about last week, I was talking about the fact that um, Slard are like a multiverse threat to all worlds. And uh, as a result of that, it's a, it's a really cool uh, monster to incorporate in your game. And my opinion is that there are lots of multiverse monsters you could use. This brush is really not it's a good thing I'm using this brush for this work what's that Joe I'm working on the PC right now just I'm here to listen as you talk not a problem so I was I decided I would come up with a whole lot of multiverse villains or threats that you guys might or might not be able to use as a dungeon master but if you're a player you may be able to convince your dungeon master to include in their campaign I know it is not the the norm to play very far by beyond level 10. It's like level 1 to 10 seems to be the, 
the go nowadays. People don't like to play at higher levels, and I totally understand, but I think there's a place for it. So I've come up with a few threats that I thought you would find interesting. And my first threat would be, let's look at multiverse um, campaigns have traditionally been high level campaigns but i was having a discussion with somebody yesterday uh now who was it i believe it was Falkard from um loots um loots and dice loots and dice i think it is and he was saying well maybe running a multiverse game at low level rather than high level and then you know da- down powering all the monsters because a lot of the monsters when you're playing in the multiverse they're very very powerful they're very dangerous but maybe you could um, make them less powerful less dangerous uh, for your campaign if you wanted to just start off at level one or level three rather than playing at, at somewhere in the vicinity of level anywhere from level 11 through to um, level 15 as a starting point for a multiverse game so maybe that would be a way of doing it. Okay, right now this is where I'm going to go along the top with this color. So that was one way you kind of could look at doing it. Um, I don't know that it necessarily will work for every campaign and for every group, but certainly I thought it was one way of looking at it, and that would mean those people who feel much more comfortable with a, a much simpler stat block uh, and characters, because high-level characters are very complicated. There's a lot going on. It can be a bit intimidating. You you could actually run your multiverse game if you wanted to, just using lower level characters. I wouldn't, you know, I, I don't think that Wizards of the Coast is really equipped to provide you with the tools for doing that. I know that's not very helpful. So I was looking at sort of tools that you could use, and then how can I create tools for you that you could utilize in your game that are relatively simple and easy to um, incorporate. So uh, I've been percolating on this idea, working my way through it, and I feel like a lot of video content will be looking very much at um, the multiverse and Spelljammer and um, Planescape and how to do that with characters and how to do that in terms of story. Okay, I'm relatively happy with that. I don't think I need to do too much more to that. I think the base is done. Um, a wash, yes, maybe, but that's pretty much finished. I don't have to worry about too much more of that. Thank God for that. We can move on. I can do the, the actual toes. Yes, we're going to paint spots. Don't you worry. The spots are coming. Right, so that is that one. I just thread the needle again. Uh, <laughs> there. Got it. Let's put that somewhere out of the way for now. A drink of water. Experiencing Vietnam. Hello, how's it going? I am with um, the Gamers Hall and currently running a Domain of Dread uh, where creatures, items, NPCs and other things from all books and other multiverse have fallen into, into the domain. Oh, cool. Nice one. I like the idea. All right, so uh, I'm going to get the black out. I want to get the basics of uh, the toes done because I want to hit them with different colors. I don't want them just to be black. And we've also got to do spots, so I need to pay attention to that point too. Ah, come here. So I'm using Vallejo black for anybody who's wondering. Right, so that'll be more than enough. <laughs> Probably too much. It's too late now. It's, it's done. Uh, now, which brush was this? This is this brush here. Yeah, so first first major threat that you could have in a multiverse game that I thought of what you could discuss and that is dragons re-establishing the dragon kingdom as part of the the great game now um, there I mean dragons did have a kingdom that pretty much dominated um, the world uh, or worlds much like the mind flayers there was a period of time where they they really had dominance over everything oh this is going to be there's going to be a peg to paint on. We'll get it. We'll get it. Don't you worry. Uh, so I thought that was a great idea. Now, I was talking to AJ Pickett, who was discussing the great game. The great game, and I don't remember its official name, is a game that dragons play that really nobody else really understands or knows that much about. 
uh, that they take part in. And its purpose, its purpose, I, I don't know that AJ actually explained all of that. I've got to get AJ to actually do a, a video. I'll ask him to do a video on the great game, the Dragon's Great Game. Because really it's sort of like a, it's like a chess game with a purpose. And the chess pieces are real pieces in the world. And they take their their goal being usually um, domination, uh, certain types of dragons. And not all the time, but yeah. And, and I thought that would be quite a, a nice way to include it. Uh, so a little bit of um, motivation for your dragons as they try to re-establish their kingdom. So yes, that could be a multiverse spanning campaign or adventure if you really wanted to. Oh, this is going to be just a lot of fun. Right, let's wash out that brush again. So yes, dragons. One option. And then you've got, uh, I think, probably... What about stopping the birth of a god? Um, I believe that Asirak, is that how it's pronounced, Asirak, uh, basically tried to, uh, I think it's in the Tomb of Annihilation, is trying to bring a god uh, to life or birth a god. And that's a pretty, you know, um, multiverse spanning threat, stopping a god from being born. It would obviously be an evil god, a god that has, you know, would add to the chaos and um, carnage that uh, already exists. Oop, this is going to be very, very difficult to get into some of these little spots here with this brush, but uh, it's all right, we'll get there. And angle is going to be my biggest problem, I can see it right now. Ah, there we go, I got it. All right. Do we have anybody in the poll who's actually um, played a multiverse game in the polls? Yes, we've got somebody. We've got about 40% that said yes, they've done it. All right. Well, that's, that's good news. We've got a few people. Not a lot. We've got a few people. Now, I obviously, I have got to make a decision about what I'm going to paint next time around, and I will. I have already kind of selected what I would do. I know a lot of you are not necessarily experienced painters. I'm not saying that I am, uh, or even that I'm particularly good at it. But uh, I'm probably going to hit um, some even simpler miniatures than these so that I can get them done in one session and so that I can sort of chat about story stuff and what's going on. Oh. Josh, hello, Josh, A.K. Brick. Don't forget, um, Tokoa are um, a thing. These things can dream up the most insane god poss um, gods possible. I yes, true, very true. They they they, um, they have some very weird motivations. That uh, that particular race, they don't. They just that species is absolutely nuts. Now. I'm going to have to just move that so that I can see the top of the, the claw. What do you got here? Don't forget the Kotoa thing. Oh, the fishy people. Yep, that's right. I know, fishy people. I know what they are. Yes, they are coming through. It's probably really, really slow. I, I feel like today I'm unlucky in that um, usually the last two streams have been very, very strong. But it is school holidays here. So that probably means, and it's not a sunny day, so I would imagine there's a lot of kids on an Xbox and computers and the internet, and so the internet is just going to struggle. Um, and I do apologize if it's a bit choppy today. Hopefully that'll clean up. Uh, okay. So yeah, it's coming through. It's just taking a little bit of time. My home game had a multiverse um, visitors, um, but hasn't uh, ventured out, out there yet. Oh, good. Cool. Now, for those of you who are wondering, what was I going to do with the spots? I'm actually going to go with not just green spots, but blue spots. And uh, I know that's a little odd, but I wanted my um, miniature to be outside of the norm. I didn't really want it to be exactly 
like everybody else's. All right, I'm gonna clean off this brush, it's getting too mucky. Gotta be careful I don't mess it up, eh? Uh, and that's, that's that. Cool. All right, good. The connection's improved, so that means that uh, you guys should be getting a decent feed coming through now. I do apologise if it's been um, really shite till up, up until about now. So we need some more world-ending cataclysmic problems to deal with, not just in the birth of a god. And you can make up your own god, but what about the most common thing and you're probably very familiar with it, and that is destroying an artifact. Okay, an artifact that is capable of ending worlds. I mean, that is that is the pinnacle of uh, any kind of major threat, right? And Lord of the Rings is a good example. The One Ring is a really good example of using an artifact as the main sort of focus, because if you don't, you know, everything ends. Now... There's something wacky going on with the claw there. Oh, I know what it is. I've overpainted. I've overpainted an area. I knew something like that might happen, but there we go. Let's see if I can fix that while I can see it. Again, another problem why my eyes, my eyes, as my eyes get older, it's harder to see what's going on. Yeah. So the the toenail is actually doesn't end there it's here there it is little touch up little error things happen like that cool all right okay so toes done um i think i think i'm ready to start putting some little splotches on uh things but i'm gonna hit the talons now with a different color. Now last week I was using Al Brown, which I feel like is actually, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of got a shiny effect to some part of it. So I think that worked really well. I'm gonna do that again um, when I get to the uh, the toes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this Minotaur hide and just go with like a the tip of the brush and the side of the brush and just go along that a little bit higher up to give it even a, a slightly different um, um, color to it, so that the, the talons sort of stand out a bit more. This is a lot lighter, this brown, so it's probably, it'll either look all right, or um, it'll look like shite. <laughs> There's a good possibility it could look like just shite. So, yeah. Let's see, that's, there's a lot of medium in that, um, I mean, I shook it, but it's not, I didn't shake it enough, probably. Maybe I need to do that again. I'll give it another shake. Uh, my world-ending threat I'm uh, working on is a cold war between the the red giant worm and a gold giant worm. Ah. So you're going dragons. Cool. I mean, it, it you know, it makes perfect sense. Dragons, Dungeons and Dragons, you've got to have dragons there, right? That's just how it is. Uh, okay, so let's see if that made an improvement on... Yeah, that's better. And we'll just get some of that paint off. And now... Um, so the tip and the edge a little bit higher up, and then just go like that. Yeah, it's... Okay, so probably less Fred. Uh... No, 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 we'll, 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 we'll get heavy-handed. Otherwise, you won't be able to see it, will you? All right, so wash out the brush. That worked out pretty well. I think I'll do that again. <clears throat> What's that? Experiencing Vietnam. What do you got here? You could also have uh, Mordenkainen pull a, a group of PCs together. Okay, teleport them from all around the multiverse. Each time they get um, teleported to deal with a new threat, uh, they can play a different subclass. Well, that's very different. I I would not have even considered that. Yeah, you suppose quantum leap style game. Yeah, okay. Um, the treat is stopping, or the threat is stopping a dragon from absorbing all of the other e echoes. Why not? 
that's a very very quantum leap dungeons and dragons what a what a really clever idea you probably already knew that though okay i'm gonna go along here a bit more okay that's that but i feel like that's gonna actually working out pretty well there's one there that i think i probably need to put a bit more paint on but i'm also worried that i'll i'll overdo it so let's just see if i can get this to work let's just say fred okay move on deciding how much to put on oh it's always a tricky bit it does sound <clears throat> josh <clears throat> i agree it does it sounds like an amazing idea it, it takes your game like is this the sort of thing that Wizards of the Coast would come up with? I think, I feel like Wizards of the Coast has been looking at older adventures for so long when they make their own stuff up that we really haven't had anything that was sort of rev revolutionary. Um, you know, I, I personally, I'm a fan of um, Dark Sun um, and uh, Spelljammer. Even Planescape's all right, but I, I pr kind of prefer the Spelljammer myself. But I, I think Theros is really good because it's it's really taking what we all know in terms of mythology and putting it together. Um, it's, it's Greek mythology, basically, and somebody's tried to pass it off as an IP. <laughs> let's, be, let's be clear. We know what that is. Yeah. <clears throat> right now, I think with my... My, my spots, which I'm going to paint in like now. I'm going to start doing that now. And I'm pretty happy with those talons. They look pretty good. I'm going to go with splots, and I'm going to use a pretty, a slightly bigger brush. Where did that little cover go? I put the cover down. Have I lost it? Oh, you know this. Uh, no, there it is. I found it. I found it. Hello, David. How's it going? Are you going to review the Wild Beyond the Witchlight? Yes, I am. Um... I, I'm I'm still I st I'm really struggling to get my head around that adventure. Now that that doesn't mean that I think it's a bad adventure. I am just really struggling to get my head around the fact that Wizards of the Coast did that adventure. <laughs> uh, um, I, uh, is that that is is that a nasty thing to say? But uh, let's get let's be real here. The fact that Wizards of the Coast made that adventure is is a bit hard to imagine sometimes. So I've got my two dark greens. We're going to do some splotchy spots on this thing. I'm going to use my splayed out brush because actually I don't want it to look too perfect and nice. And the tiny brush is just going to, that's what it's going to do. It's going to make it look too intentional. But um, I think I've been working my way through, through Art and Arcana, uh, which is a sort of a, a graphic history of Dungeons and Dragons. Which I found really interesting. You know, it's a lot of the stuff they have to say in Art and Arcana uh, is amazing at the very beginning. And then we get to the third edition and it starts to fall apart. And you start to see, well, they didn't really... They, they are pulling their punches now. They're really sort of playing it safe. And I didn't like the fact that they're doing that. And they're still continuing to play it safe. I'm up to about fifth edition in the book. And um, I'm probably going to... Uh, read um, of Dice and Men, uh, which is a game, uh, which is a, a book about <clears throat> the history of Dungeons and Dragons. Because if you haven't figured it out, I would like to, I would like to do a, um, a, a Dungeon Master roundtable on who created Dungeons and Dragons and the history of Dungeons and Dragons. And I, I've done I've done some research, and I do know some stuff, but I don't know everything, as is always the case. Um, but I'm also going to be going over Tasha's and all the other books I haven't reviewed. So unfortunately, I believe um, a lot of the other content that I was making might kind of be put on hiatus while I do that. Although probably not the player stuff. I, I um I have every intentions of talking about um silvery barbs. It's coming up and and druid craft. Yes, the clever uses of um druid craft. They're they're on their way. It's it's going to happen. 
And then there's also the, the fact that I would very much like to uh, cover something like uh, mounts and uh, followers because I, I, I feel like this is the time now to get it done. Now whether my spots are going to work, I'm going to go over my spots with lighter colours by the way. And I don't want to put too many of these um, bluish, dark bluish um, spots because I've got to have some green as well. Um, put one on top. Okay, and I think maybe one on one of the legs. Okay, all right, so that's the beginning of our spots, our positioning. I'm going to be moving on to green. So yes, um, they're, they're all in the bank. Uh, all the books, the only one I haven't got and I am reluctant to do anything with is frankly Strixhaven. I, I, am, I am really not keen on doing anything with Strixhaven. And I do apologise if that seems unfair. Um, it's just I don't want to pay full price for that book. I just don't feel like it's, it's the right book for people. Uh, it certainly doesn't feel like the right book for me. I, I'm, it, I have no interest in it whatsoever. I don't even feel like it's a, an adventure that will work. So, yes, I, I don't know. I haven't even tried to buy it. I have not tried to buy it. I will eventually, but it'll, I'll have to sell it cheap. <laughs> um, let's go back to talking about threats of the multiverse while I'm doing my uh, spot painting. So I was thinking, what about... Because demons are demon lords and uh, de and print, um, you know demon princes, a big part of uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So stopping the release of a, a a demon lord or demon prince from the abyss through the demon gate. For those of you who don't anything know anything about the demon gate, the demon gate is basically a way. It's an access point from the abyss through to the other worlds, uh, and that is that is something that they try to look at. Um, introducing and out of the abyss a pre-made adventure that they uh, put out a little while ago a wizard of the coast so i uh, sorry i do apologize i didn't say what paint i this the blue paint i put on was under dark indigo it's a very dark color and then this um troll skin green is what i'm doing now and i'm going to kind of go for the sides a little bit and then on the top Nothing too, nothing too obvious that uh, it looks like it's, it's that intentional. Because it got to kind of look natural in some way, right? So I don't want perfect. We want something that's not perfect. And there, there, there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shift its position more to its stomach here. And then I think a bit of a patch there, a bit of patch there. We'll put one on the inside here. You don't have to paint your slard by this, um, by um, like this. Uh, seriously, um, for those of you who are looking at this and thinking, "Oh, it just looks too whack, Fred." No, don't do that. Well, look, it's up to you. You do what you want with your miniatures. Yeah. And I will do what I want with my miniatures. And um, I kind of felt like the two colours were a good idea. So that's what I'm doing. There's not enough green there, so I'm going to have to do that again. The Magic the Gathering crossovers, I understand people not being very keen on them. I am glad that they have int introduced some of them. Now the reason being is because it's new stuff rather than just the old stuff. But I want the old stuff as well. Uh... And they're doing that. It's just very, very slow, that's all. So my hope is they will continue to do more of the Magic the Gathering. But I feel like the Strixhaven one was just... It was just... The, it, Strixhaven doesn't have very much to it. It's not like Theros, which, where there's heaps of stuff. Like, Theros is well built out. That Strixhaven is appallingly badly conceived. Um... Okay, I think we've almost got all our spots where I want them to be. 
and I think oh, one more on the back. Where's it going to go? We've got to find a spot where it's going to work. Got to paint a spot where a spot's going to work. Really, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. So, yes, dealing with Demon Lords. Fairly obvious a multiverse um, challenge for, for players. Okay, so let's move on to the next color. And is my, are my toenails, my toenails are all ready to go. So we're going to hit them with the L Bear Brown because I liked what was going on there. So we'll do that again. Um, uh, do I have a little, another little spot that I can put the paint in? I think I'm running out of spots. So it's going on top. It's not very much paint, so it should be fine. So this is just to run sort of the edge along and I'm running the edge along and the tip just to get a little bit on the uh, on the toes, um, the, the toenail. Yeah, Theros, I, uh, David, um, experiencing in Vietnam, I think they, they are, outsta I mean, Theros was outstanding. And as a source book, might I say, as a source book, I felt like it was outstanding what it was doing. What am I doing with this brush? This brush is the wrong size for what I want to get done. Put that away, Fred. Stop doing the stu stupid stuff. I I would I really wish that they would do um, source books that had lots of maps of these locations that you can actually use. And I don't just mean area maps in you know, a big world area maps. I mean like location maps. So you don't have to draw them yourself. You don't have to figure out what that place looks like. I find that hugely useful. And they just don't do it enough. Okay, like... Fred, shut up for a second. Let's get these town, these toenails sorted. That'll do. That'll do. That's all right. I don't know what happened there. I felt like I was putting paint on, but nothing happened. Or is it my imagination? Oh man, maybe I put too much paint on now. Can I see it? Uh, Yeah, I feel like the tip side of the brush idea was supposed to be my intention, but it's not really working because of the angle. So I'm kind of just having to just put it on. So be it. Okay, all right, so that's good. So we can now leave that. I'll come back to that later, and we'll put the lighter one on later. Yeah, I mean, to be real, let's, let's get real. If, if you're a dungeon master or a player... It, the location maps are actually really useful, not just for the dungeon master, but for players who want to get a kind of an idea of what the architecture of the location's like. It's not just about, I need one because there's going to be a battle in here or combat. It's, I need to be able to explore the location if I'm a player and, um, <coughs> oh, pardon me, I apologise, um, yeah, that's a big factor. I really do think that uh, they, they, they missed the, the they really missed an opportunity to make some of the source books outstanding. Okay. Hi, Kathy. How's it going? I didn't realize you were here. I'm glad you are. I did see your message last uh, yesterday. Uh, was it yesterday? I believe it was the yesterday um, yesterday stream that you put in. All right. So now, so we've got a lot of people who haven't actually been in, in, in a multiverse game, but they would like to. About 55% and 36% have been in a multiverse game. 9% do not want to be in one at all. That's interesting. I kind of figured that might be the case. I, th I thought that there would be a possibility that there'd be some people who would hate the idea. Okay, so we're going to have to go to blue again. So I'm going to go with this um, frost blue color. All these paints, these Knowles' paints, they're just army painter paints rebranded, okay? So uh, the, the, it's not something that you won't be able to find. If you're using army painter paints, you'll be fine. If you're using Vallejo, matching them up would be a bit more difficult. Not that I, I imagine most people are going to paint their miniature like I have. Um, you do it you're the way, your way, your way. You go, I did it my way. <laughs> Old painting ad, if I remember right. Is it Dulux? something like that um yeah i can't remember exactly All right, let's dry paint on top let's get rid of that oh right so paint here 
Is that enough? I'm going over this with the, the wider brush. Oops! Look! I painted myself. I already have. I'd already done that. It's not, a, it's not an emergency. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Um, let's just clean myself off. Uh, what's this? I got the, the paint night kit for my red slard. It was good value, um, in my opinion, for people looking to start up. Okay, thank you, David. Good to know. Also, I used to be a, um, a big Ravenloft fan. Yeah, I, I, like, um, I like Ravenloft. I've run through the adventure, the original one, and the Curse of Strahd. But since the source book came out, I dropped the, the setting. Yeah, well, yeah, Van Richten's guide to, to Ravenloft was... <laughs> I, I had to laugh. I, now I just want to run a Scooby-Doo um, horror <laughs> that, 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 that I was talking talking to a few people. I was like, we got to do, do a Scooby-Doo adventure at some point. I don't know that I could convince anybody to do it. Mainly because it would be itching a scratch uh, where I am trying to take the piss out of something. So it's not necessarily something you want to be trying to do, right? Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of blue there over the, the darker one. Not trying to be perfect about this because it's supposed to be natural, right? And I'm not trying to paint completely over it, just a little bit over it. Now that's that side, that's that side. I think I got that side. Oh, there's the top. Let's deal with the top. Got to stay with the chat, don't I? I, I get lost a little bit, just a little bit. The old source books, David, I think a lot of people need to consider that um, sometimes they may be the better source. I know that a lot of um, uh, the law... YouTubers are looking at trying to make stuff that keeps the old stuff alive because a lot of the older stuff is actually more interesting or be, or just done better. There's just more to it. At a time where everything gets heavily sanitized, uh, it was just weird because, you know, you play Dungeons and Dragons to get away from all of that stuff. Um, and your game can be anything it likes. Um, whether that be good or bad, it should be none of nobody else's business but your own. Uh, it's like entering somebody else's home and deciding, no, you you can't you can't drink that tea, because that tea is not the tea for <laughs> that everybody should be drinking. I was like, okay, that's that's getting a bit much. Anyway. I'm pretty happy with that. That's the blue. We'll get rid of this. Uh, Pale Rider, how's it going? Here he is. I think it would be cool if they came out with a high tech setting. I think I think we need to see uh, a, a sort of a science fiction setting. Absolutely, I do think Pale Rider, you're right. I'm hoping that's what's going on. Star Frontiers, I would like to see something different. I would like to see something completely new. Star. Star Frontier is is fine, or Star Finders, or whatever it is. That's all very well, but I feel like it's time for something that we haven't seen. Okay, so I'm going with spots again. This is Grug, Grug Green. So I'll give it a good shake. <clears throat> oh, I haven't played a multiverse D&D, but I have with the Palladium books. Well, I, yeah, I suppose I should have stipulated that it could cover anything. In the poll so if if you haven't played specifically a dungeons and dragons multiverse game just ignore the word dungeons and dragons and just say yes palladium books multiverse yeah do that mark that down absolutely <clears throat> now aj pickett is a big fan of palladium you can't stop him talking about those books i'll tell you <laughs> uh, dear. oh and i hung out <clears throat> for those of you who are wondering what's happening in europe i hung out with um Falkard from um Lutz and dice and um rich mary from ireland uh Falkard is in the ukraine and then aviad beyond the screen he's over in israel <clears throat> and I'm hoping that we get together again because we had a good talk about all sorts of different things and I feel like um, I feel like they would be open to just doing their own thing without me having to be around which 
which is great because you know we, we're not really in the same part of the world so it's a very bit it's very difficult to organize <laughs> let's let's be, let's be real it's extremely difficult to organize okay so <clears throat> i'm going over the dark greens with this lighter green which is probably either going to make it look cool or like garbage <laughs> i think that's i think that's that's what's likely to happen um but in the end, even if it's too light, I can wash it and it'll down downplay the, the very, very, because it's a very light green. Grug green is like, is super bright. But it'll certainly bring out that, those patches. And I'm just going to go like that. Little patch there. Oh, there's a little green there. So I'll do this one here. Is that right? Yes, it is green. Is, this blue? is it blue? Is it green? No, it's green. It's just so dark, it's hard to tell. You can see this brush is seriously worn now and whoops almost hit it somewhere else there we go now I'm not suggesting that you you paint your your miniature like this but I felt like things like frogs and toads have very different colorizations right then they're, they're not very consistent and they they have layers and um, it's not sort of pure it's not so I wanted to sort of duplicate that to a certain degree ah David wants to know how high tech you're talking about um, is it Drake Warden is the best class for Shaggy and Scooby-Doo is it I, I, I wouldn't have not, I wouldn't have guessed I felt like commoner was the best um, class for um, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo I wouldn't even give them a class maybe I would give them the chef feet <laughs> uh, dear. yeah do we have to include the um, the other aspect of their personalities which is um, sm smoking weed <laughs> Right, so uh, almost, almost there with the spots. Still have the talon, uh, the the toenails to do because I'm not going to just leave it with just that dark brown. It's going to be a bit more going on, I think. And I got to wash that out again. Um, what do you got here? Now, Overboard Dem has got his own channel, does miniatures, terrain, reviews. You need to check him out sometime. A lot of stuff that you don't normally see, by the way. What do you got here, Joe? Uh, fifth edition may be my very last edition I play. I have just about everything made for fifth ed edition, I believe, and I'm 50 years old. Unless the rules are really awesome, I'll probably just stay in fifth ed edition. Okay, I'm going to put up a poll eventually. On, not on the not on a video, but um, on my community tab about whether people are going to take part in the new playtest for uh, Dungeons and Dragons Evolved, because I can totally understand people being a little bit frustrated at this point and really deciding they want to opt out. Um, particularly if they've just got into the hobby, and suddenly to find out that they're going to redo all the source box. All three source box are getting a, a facelift. That would be quite frustrating. They've done it before. I, I, you know, there are things that Wizards of the Coast have done that have been excellent, and other things that they have done that have shown that they have and just got the same problems that everybody else had uh, at TSR. Um, but, yeah. At least the game is more popular than it's ever been, which has always been my focus. Is I just wanted more people to play, but I do feel like the the uh, the community will fracture with the development of Dungeons and Dragons Evolution. And this time round, whereas you know with Dungeons and Dragons Next, I really avoided uh, being part of it, uh, and then I wound up getting roped into not just the beta test, but the alpha play test that was private. <sighs> behind closed doors and and frankly I'll never do that again um, for a very good reason now I know for some of you that might be too much in terms of what I've done with the green I totally get it I might actually hit it with the um, 
a little just spot of the zombie flesh as well but we'll do that after because I want to lighten up my blue patches as well and we're gonna go with the ghostly blue all right now uh, pale rider I love rifts fair enough AJ has teased at running a rifts game which would be awesome yet yeah, don't don't count on him doing that he's teased at it but seriously You've got to understand that um, AJ runs homebrew. He does not do pre-made adventures, which means that what he 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 puts forward is is very personal, and and when you it's as personal as that, sometimes it's just not something you want to share. Um, I do know that. Okay, so I don't know if AJ's allowed um, um, said I could say anything about this. I don't even know if Esper the Bard said I was allowed to mention it. I'm going to say it anyway. Okay, so Esper the Bard and AJ Pickett uh, got together because uh, we had a chat together with a, with some other people uh, a little while ago, and they're going to do a game together. Uh, I believe it will be, it's either YouTube or Twitch. I think it'll be Twitch. I, I'm not too sure. One or the other. And um, AJ's going to play in um, Esper's game. Uh, he did this with uh, Dungeon Dad, and he's going to do it with Esper in the future. And it's supposed to be, now, what's the date? I think it's going to be the 22nd of January, which is the 21st of January in the United States. So the 22nd of January in New Zealand, New Zealand um, daylight time, um, in my time zone, but the 21st if you're uh, in other parts of the world like the United States. Okay, I spilled my guts. Um, hopefully I don't get into trouble. I, I'm still waiting on Esper the Bard to let me know if he wants to do this um, discussion on um, who created Dungeons and Dragons too. I'm hoping he says yes. He kind of did, but I think he just gets really busy. This is the problem when you've got a book that's um, chewed up like a good chunk of your year, and he's he's had to work very very hard on it. And it's it's not just done, you know. It's it, there's there's other things going on. Plus, he's got kids. Um, I'm sure all of you are aware of the complications of having kids. You have to change the way you do things. Right, so. Uh, now, back to threats. We, we got the, the, prim, the primordials. Um, I thought that would be a really good idea. Sort of a goal of creating like a elemental fury across all the worlds and and the goal would be to stop that from happening because that's what elementals are prone to doing is trying to um, release the fury of the elemental um, elements fire water air earth that sort of stuff unleash it let the raw power of the world take over so another way that you could sort of incorporate a multiverse game if you wanted to. Okay, I think it's playing out too much. I'll need to just do something with my brush. Um, I've listened to one of AJ's uh, adventures on his channel. It was uh, pretty cool. Yeah, AJ's storytelling skills are unbelievable. And um, if you've ever seen, um, come up, had much contact with um, Josiah Dungeon Dad, his storytelling um, skills are by far some of the craziest stuff I've ever come. I, I laugh so hard when he tells me what's been going on. Um, but then again, he, he has to do it to sort of make a living on um, Twitch. Now, I know a lot of people don't know Esper the Bard that well. I can assure you that Esper the Bard, since I have actually talked to him on video chat, is one of the nicest and funniest people I've ever come across. He is so funny. And so easy to get along with. Trust me, when you start talking to some YouTubers, it can be a little bit, feel a little bit artificial, a little bit um, forced. No problems. No problems with this, this person. He's, he is so, it's so easy to get along with him. Right, okay, so that is that. I really hate the green now. I've got to do something about the screen. It's, 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 it's whacking me around too much. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, 
I'm not unhappy about the blue. I'm, I'm actually fine with the blue. So I'm going to keep that. But the green, there's something wrong with it. I'm sure you can tell. <clears throat> now, zombie flesh. We'll do zombie flesh. And then I'm going to hit the toes on this thing. And then I might go and do some sort of highlights and just bring out um, some of the detail and areas that got lost along the way. Now, where am I putting this? I'm putting it over here. Oh, um, another another idea that you might want to use, and that is, um, there's a, uh, now what, what's the place called? Pen, is it Paz, Pazana? Pazana's, it's like the plane of a thousand portals. And some of those portals are two-way, and some of them are one-way. But what would happen if on the plane of a thousand portals, all of the all of the portals became two-way? And you'd have to destroy it, literally, to stop the influx of um, beasties and creatures from various um, worlds um, just running rife. So I thought that would be another way of sort of including uh, a multiverse game. And it's a very different location. It probably, a, it would not be an easy location to live in. In fact, I think it would be extremely difficult. That did nothing. What am I, is there, I have any paint on there at all? Probably not. You know, let's try that again. Did that work? No. No, it didn't. No, that's not, I'm not doing that again. That did not work at all. <laughs> right, sometimes you do something and it doesn't work and sometimes it does work. Hmm, what am I going to do with this? I, I just don't want us to leave it like that. And that's just, it just, it's too much. I, I feel like, I feel like it's just too light. Way too light. Well, have I got another green? I probably do. Let's try Vallejo. Okay, this is a really dark green. This is waft. There's a loft waft camo green. My God, I, I, I don't know what it's called. It's a Vallejo paint. It's a green. We're going to give it a go. We're going to see if we can't fix up the patches because they look a little shite. Actually, I'll let them dry a little bit and I'll, I will tackle the, uh, the toes. Those toenails need a, a good fix up. So we'll get this going. Where's this paint going? Um, running out of spots to stick stuff. Okay. Doesn't need to be much, does it, Fred? Okay, let's uh, let's make that work. Remember, this is this is it. The slard has to be finished today, because I'm not coming back to it. Slardy, you're you're on your own after this. Um, I did buy some uh, gloss varnish. I know you can get matte, but I I didn't want to spray this thing when it's finished. I, I decided I was going to paint it on. That was my um, the advice I got from my brother, and. My brother's advice, David, is usually pretty good when it comes to painting miniatures because he's, he's a lot better at this sort of thing than I am. Oh. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. It, I mean, it, it's awkward, awkward angle for me, so um, I kind of have to position it so that I can see what's going on. You may be able to see what's going on here. So tip... And edge, uh, not really. It doesn't really work that way, does it, Fred? Tip and edge, tip and edge. Not too bad. At least the toenails don't look just black, which is what I didn't want to have happen. All right, that's enough. Don't get too f um, um, carried away, Fred. Otherwise, it's just gonna you're just gonna mess it up. Right, so now we're back to doing my spots, which I'm going to try and fix because the green spots don't look great. I'm not happy with that. Oh, almost, almost screwed that up. Ah, oh, another idea, and I don't know if you guys like this idea or not, but what about uh, Bahamut, uh, the Horned King, expanding the infinite maze into the other worlds? So the infinite maze is really where the Horned King, which is like um, a demonic... Lord Prince, um, Minotaur, 
and obviously mazes and minotaurs go together and and that maze is, is like its own world and have to, to have it expand into other worlds would be quite um terrifying i would imagine because it, you, you'd be getting lost all the time so i thought that might be a, a nice uh, multiverse concept to apply to a game if you wanted to oh 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 come on you there we go we got that sweet ha ha now um we're going big brush and we'll try to correct what i was doing before this color looks so similar to the orc color that maybe it's just going to make a mess no it's actually thinner oh okay if i wash that that might, might actually work that that might actually work okay all right let's let's keep going it toned down the the very bright green that i put on so i think that helped big dark dark sun fan ah yes i like dark sun my player no, i never found players that like dark sun though what if the threat is going to be um, going to each world and stopping the um the sorcerer kings from making other worlds like dark sun yeah well you've got to be pretty stupid to be doing that um i suppose you could say the sorcerer sorcerer um kings are pretty stupid um so yeah why not absolutely certainly that would be a cool idea what else have i got um we could go back to mind flayers mind flayers used to sort of have a control of a lot of the the multiverse so there's nothing wrong with having a mind flayer colony and an elder brain attempting to conquer the astral sea maybe with the the assistance of um asmodeus an alliance with asmodeus of course let's let's get real asmodeus is going to turn on them eventually but um until that time comes uh, you play it out as if they are allies okay the green is looking slightly better um, i think i'm going to just have to leave it as a more a darker color than trying to get too light with it because it just doesn't it doesn't work um the light patch there yeah i think that's 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 certainly an improvement in my books so yeah maybe you could use that or um a Cererac is often up to mischief and I was thinking maybe a nice way to include a Cererac in your campaign is to have him trying to build uh, an undead engine um, designed to undo the, the magic weave. Now it's the sort of thing that a Cererac would do because a Cererac tends to get up to mischief that is almost a, an attempt to undermine the very nature of everything. And to undo the weave means suddenly there's there's no magic anymore. And I, I can I can see um, a Cererac doing that. Um, why is the reason? I'm trying to come up with a good reason as to why a Cererac would do something as stupid as that. Because a Cererac's not stupid, uh, but his motives are often very peculiar. So yeah, but I thought undoing the weave. Even if it's not a Cererac, would still be a, a very cool story to, to play out. Oh, okay. That's better, I guess. That's all right. Let's just hit that there with this. That top bit is just awful, so I'm going to go over it as well. So, yes, those were my ideas for multiverse villains. Oh, that was too thick. Is it going to be all right, though? Well, I think actually, even if the, even if the patches aren't sort of identical, that's probably a good thing. Oh, that's still a side one there, and I don't want that to stay like that. That's not going to work. That's better. Even the little the lighter, just a small smidgen of light around the outside edge is better than what I had before. Okay, I'm a lot happier with that. That's worked out significantly better than I had hoped. Um, I think I'm going to do the the spikes on its back. Um, I'm going to use the, the browns that I've been using before to actually um, make them more than just black spikes because it, it kind of, it's boring. So I'll do that. Yeah, I know I'm over time. It's, that happens. It's painting. Oh, thread, thread the needle. I got it. That's good though. Right, so where's the brown? I'm going to go with the brown. 
Oh, I've got a bit of brown already out. There it is there. That's this Albear brown that I was using before. I don't know how how movable is that paint. It looks like it's starting to set. It's very hot in here, in my office here. Is it, it's starting to form a skin on it. It's all right though, okay. Let's dip into the inside of it. Right, so let's just go tip a spike. Tip a spike. I'm going to use the tip in the side of my brush mostly for this. And I don't think I'm going to try to get both sides of it because I still want there to be some black. So it's going to be... inconsistent in terms of his apl application. We're just going to spot paint it. Uh, what's that? What do you got here? Experience Vietnam. Uh, use the rod of seven parts. Each part is scattered around the multiverse. Collect it to stop the the light. Asira from um, overthrowing Vecna. Lich. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, yeah, I suppose. Um, I've always, I, I think, who was it? Jordan was saying that um, running a campaign with um, with the uh, this, the Rod of Seven Parts is a campaign, and I believe AJ was mentioning this as well. is a very difficult campaign to run because it, it, they almost always don't end at all. They just come adrift uh, for a variety of different reasons. Um, it's it's not an easy campaign or adventure to sort of uh, formulate. So th I think that's one of the things that they were saying to me about it. And, um, well, AJ was anyway. Um, I've, I've only met um, Jordan for about half an hour. And I didn't really get to talk to him that much. So I'm hoping that'll change. I'm hoping that in 2022 I will get to talk to... Um, Jordan, um, rather than wind up organising a meeting with her for, for Jordan and other people and then disappearing. <laughs> that was my own fault. I did that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm happy with that. We are going to hit it with the lighter colour and I probably won't have time for it to dry very much, so maybe it won't be great. Now, what am I doing? I don't need to put the cap on that. So this is, we're back to Minotaur Hide and the fast the last finishing touches as far as I'm concerned and I then I think at that point um, it will be done um, we shall be done it will be done uh, what's that Scott not a big fan of Jordan prefer AJ's videos and that's fine um, look, look, look let's get real um, Mr. Rex is got more followers than anybody else but if there's anybody on anywhere on YouTube that works harder than anybody else it's AJ Pickett in terms of law stuff just the sheer quantity of stuff he puts out uh, nobody can keep up with him <laughs> he knows it and they all know it too trust me <laughs> all right but I have to say that Jordan is um, very, very quiet and a very nice person. In terms of somebody with uh, really good manners, absolutely. He's going to be, he's going to prove to be a, a a huge asset to discussions in the future. I know it. The problem is that people tend to talk over the top of Jordan, and um, this tends to happen when you stick. Four YouTubers in the same panel, it, it, it is very difficult to control them sometimes. Not always, but sometimes it's a bit difficult. So yes, just, just the tips. Um, will I come from the other side with this? Probably. But just a spot. Just a spot of paint, I think, rather than a lot. 
we're going to be very minimal in terms of applying this. Uh, not to mention my eyes aren't great, so I don't want to be too accurate with this because I can't. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not within my skill level. I'm pretty happy with that. There's enough different colors going on there. So we need, I'm definitely going to use some um, of the Rust Monster Orange to sort of go over the areas that need to sort of pick out detail. And um, I'm going to do what uh, a lot of people sort of suggest you do, and that's use the edge of my brush, the tip and the edge of the brush. And I'm, I'm not really sort of, it's not dry brushing, it's, it's kind of stroking lines. I think that's the best example of um, description of what, what's going on, eh? Is stroking lines. And around the mouth is where I'm going to start. And then in the front, because that's you, you see a lot of that. So, um, okay, so back over this again. Back over the top. Along here. If I am not talking as much as I was before about anything particularly useful, it's because this is the tricky stuff now. This is like the final touch-up before I, I mean, I know a lot of people would say, well, this is actually what you would do after you've washed. But I don't think that I will wash the whole miniature. I don't think that I'll go over, I'm going to do the eyelids as well. I don't think I'm going to wash the entire miniature. I think I will only wash certain areas. Um, and I, because some of the detail on this is not that obvious, I don't think you can pick out everything on this miniature. I think you kind of got to accept that some of it is, is going to kind of get lost. Not because of the thickness of the paint, but because the, the details are not crisp enough. There's not enough, no, not enough contours to actually make it work. Right, I'm going to clean that brush out, otherwise it's going to go hard. And then along the stomach, you can see those little um, flabs of fat or uh, skin. I'm going to go across them very lightly, right to about there. And there's another one. Can I get at it? Yeah. There are some ridges along here, but I think we'll just very light strokes. Nothing too major, because I don't want to sort of get too carried away. All right. And a little bit more, I'll do the other side. Now, I, with the other side, I'm, I was tempted to do the ridge, but I'm only going to do from here to there, and I think I'm going to stop. And then this bit here, it's fine, we'll do those. So I'm off to the beach very shortly, do some more reading, sleep under a tree, do some working, try to work off some of my fat. I've gotten, look, tell you, I've been working right through all the lockdowns, but I still put on a lot of weight. And I, f I don't feel like myself anymore. I, honestly, I feel, it feels weird to be in this body. I've never been as unfit as I am now. And um, kind of concerning at times. But like anything, it can be fixed. I just need to put some work in. Um, experiencing Vietnam. Beholders uh, create other beholders by dreaming them up. Yes, they do. What if you are traveling the multiverse, um, taking out all of them, uh, because each one leaves a clue to where the original um super beholders ah that's that's a cool idea i i was thinking about talking about beholders but then in the end i decided that i i didn't want to write down too many different ideas and it's like bullet point stuff anyway um okay so that's the front yeah but yeah absolutely you could do something like that All right so i think maybe the back of my knuckles or the back of the hands there's some high ridged areas that could be all right if I just hit them with a little bit of this color. Probably just the knuckles. I 
nothing too fancy and the paint is drying today is not as hot as it was but it's still drying really fast yeah creating them all over the multiverse yeah I think it's a good idea absolutely right let's do the other side now you'll you guys will have to people tell me if the ring light because I set up the ring light so it's kind of put, throwing the light down rather than from the the front um, behind the camera if that's made a big difference you let me know and I'll keep doing that I think it has but feedback is always good well some feedback is good not all, all feedback but feedback on that would be good so if it's good great if it's not so good compared to what I've been doing then let me know and yeah I, I don't think there's much more I don't really feel like there's anything enough on the legs to warrant maybe the inside of that forearm there could do with a little bit we could do that though that looks like it could be could be done because you can sort of see the um, the tendons so let's use some of the orange to bring that out oh we've got a bot ignore the bot people uh, what do you got here Scott um, isn't it ironic lockdown was for health now we are all worse on um, worse health all over yeah you guys I'm um, still locked down Fred uh, we're in level 3 orange uh, is it level 3 orange or is it level 3 green I think we're in level 3 orange I think the rest of the country other than the Auckland region is um, is in level 3 green or is it level 2 green I'm so confused by it I, I, I just I don't understand it it, 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 it lost me seriously <laughs> I, I don't know what to make of it um, okay the top of this Oh, I don't know. I'm really reluctant to hit those. There's so much going on there. Okay, all right, well. Maybe I'm just getting worried about nothing. Maybe, maybe I can do that. Okay, I'll give it a go. Let's make that happen. Let's hit the top of it. Uh, yes, for those of you who are wondering, yes, I will be back tomorrow, same time. If it rains, you'll have to put up with me doing it twice, okay? One at 10 a.m., which will definitely happen, and one at 2 p.m. New Zealand time if it rains um, because I won't have anything else much to do other than read books, watch TV, or paint miniatures. So I might as well paint more miniatures. <laughs> but we'll see. It doesn't look like it's raining yet. Is it a new um, Sky-Fi? Sky-Fi, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry if I've gotten quiet, but it's, there's a lot of detail here, and it's really kind of hard to see what's going on. And I don't know that you can necessarily see what I'm doing either, but the angle is, isn't great, and I don't really want to take the miniature off the pill box because my hands are so they're soaked with um, sweat, and, uh, and if I touch the miniature, the paint's coming off. It's just so humid right now. There we go. Um, no, 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 no. I mean, to be fair, my health going down is my own fault. My, my health going down is just... All I did for the last two years is just work all the time. So I did take some time off along the way, but really... The vast majority of it is I would just work 12 hour days. And my re rationale for doing that, um, frankly, people, was I thought, well, if I could pay off the mortgage and get my house fixed up and move, I could semi-retire and then I could just do more on the YouTube um, channel thing and I could just kind of relax a bit more and not have to work as hard as I have been. And that's really what's going on. Okay, all right. I think there's a point where you have to accept you've either done enough or you haven't. 
So I'm going to accept that I've either done enough, um, and if I haven't, then I'm not capable of doing any more without doing damage to the miniature. <laughs> um, what's that experienced Vietnam? Yeah, I have a new rule. Um, 30 minutes to one hour of workout before I can start um, editing videos for D&D. Yeah, I, I should be doing that, but I'm not being. I've been doing almost four hours of um, YouTube work when I get wake up, then going to work for eight hours, and then, of course, it's like 11 o'clock at night, get home at 11.30, and then I just crash, and then do it all over again, and that's not a good way to go. Um, so let me just show you this. Hi, John, how's it going? Um, he will be back at the same time, Fred. Yeah, I'll be back at the same time, same channel, bat channel, same bat channel. <laughs> uh, I'm not going anywhere. Martial arts, did you say you uh, used to study? Yes, Scott. Yes, I, I did. Um, I, I achieved third Dan black belt uh, in Goshen Taikai, which is a style that doesn't exist anymore because uh, I was the last one. So this is the miniature. I don't know that I, it's... I probably should do a, a short or a, a, just a, an edited um, shot of the, the miniature so you can see what it's like um, in its final sort of completion. But I'll give it a spin so you can see what's going on. You can see that I have got rather adventurous and creative with my, uh, my slard. So there are some patches on here that you may decide are just too whack. I, don't, I do understand. Um, but yes, that is the slard. And it only took me just over three hours. <laughs> and, uh, uh, dear, you guys really do put up with a lot with me, uh, frankly. I, I do feel like you, you put up with an awful lot uh, watching my videos when I'm doing these painting things. <laughs> there are so many other people out there who do such such a great job of painting. Although they may, maybe they're just not good at, at talking uh, during their stream. I know a lot of people just sort of paint and they don't say anything, which I suppose is fine, I guess. Thank you. I'm glad you liked the job. And yes, we'll be back tomorrow for some more painting while I'm on holiday. So thank you to everybody who showed up. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you to the painters and the people willing to sit through an hour long stream on painting a miniature which I'm sure some people consider like watching grass grow. But wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. And I suppose I should say the other things, but um, like, you know, do all the usual YouTube things. That's all I'm going to say with that. You guys know, you guys know the deal. I've already said those things before. Why am I saying it again? No. Hey, Till next time, keep rolling those twenties. I probably will do a black wash, but not the whole thing, um, John. I do have for black wash, but I probably won't. I don't st plan to stream doing a wash on a miniature. <laughs> I have done it, but I don't think it's a great idea.